So by now everyone knows uh, what mod arithmetic basically is. So I'm just going to go over a quick concept summary and then move on to a couple of questions. So the crucial operations that one needs to know um, in mod arithmetic is um, mod exponentiation and finding inverses. Those are the most important ones. So to start off, mod exponentiation. So here we're just trying to find the value of x to the a mod m. So for example, um, if we have to calculate 3 to the 5 mod 7, we just use repeated squaring. So we just write it as 3 times 3 to the 4th mod 7, which is 3 times 3 squared, the whole square mod 7. 3 square is 9, so a 9 is the same as 2 mod 7. So we see that just after a couple of steps of repeated squaring, we get the answer, which is 5 mod 7. So this was a very uh, easy example of mod exponentiation. Moving on to um, finding inverses. So the inverse of, inverse of a number x mod m is just a number a such that ax is 1 mod m. And this inverse exists only when the GCD of x and m is 1. Now, sometimes it's very easy to find the inverse using plane observation. For example, if you're finding the inverse of 5 mod 14, we just need to find a number a such that 5a is 1 mod 14. And by plane observation, we see that that is 3 because 5 times 3 is 15 mod 14, which is 1 mod 14. But this doesn't always work, especially with larger numbers. And so we need a better algorithm. So we have the EGCD algorithm to find the inverses. So if we have to find the EGCD of 42 and 5, what we're trying to do here is basically find the inverse of 5 mod 42. So what we do initially is we just, just like the GCD algorithm, the EGCD algorithm of x and y keeps recursively calling y and uh, x mod y, so we get 5 and 42 mod 5, which is 2. And we keep going that way. till we get y equals 0. This is x and this is y. So once y equals 0, we stop recursively calling it. And um, now we start returning. So initially, the values we return are x, 1, and 0. Here, the values we return are three values called d, a, and b, where d is the GCD of the three numbers, of the two numbers, sorry. So. In the first case, since we're returning x, 1, and 0, we return 1, 1, and 0. And all the remaining times, we are returning d, b, and a minus b times the floor div of x by y. So on calculation, we see that these are the values that we are returning. Now from this algorithm, the three values that we have finally managed to return are 1, 2, and minus 17. And this algorithm tells us that we can express the numbers d, a, and b in the following form. We can write d equals ax plus by with this x and this y. So we get 1 equals As it turns out, 17 is the inverse of 5 
uh, mod 42. And we can see that by just taking the uh, mod 42 of this whole equation, we get 17 times 5 is 1 mod 42, which clearly shows that 17 is the inverse of 5 mod 42. So one last important concept is Fermat's little theorem, FLT. So in FLT, what it states is that a to the p minus 1 is just 1 mod p provided p is prime and a is not 0 mod p. So when these two conditions are satisfied, it is always the case that a to the p minus 1 is 1 mod p. And there was also an extension that we learned in class. It's there in the notes on RSA. We see that a to the p minus 1 times q minus 1 is 1 mod pq, where both p and q are primes. And they both are distinct primes. They cannot be the same prime. So for example, if you have p3 and q3, then this formula would not work. They both have to be distinct. And this would work for not only two primes, but multiple primes as well. So that's Fermat's little theorem.